In this lesson, we take a look at the shadow match shader. This shader allows you to integrate your 3D geometries onto HDR environments or photographic backplates. So you basically apply this shader to the floor plane to catch shadows from lighting within the scene. We have this car model and we want to integrate it onto this photo. Hey folks, welcome to Mogra Floss. This video is a free sample from our course, The Ultimate Introduction to Arnold 6 for Cinema 4D. It's a massive 12 hours course in which we explore all the aspects of Arnold for Cinema 4D thoroughly. Make sure to check it out. The link is in the description. Also, be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. First, let's add an Arnold sky. Create a new image shader. and rename it to HDR. And assign it to the Arnold Sky. And that is another way of assigning an HDR image to an Arnold Sky instead of changing the color type to shader network and then linking the HDR image. Open up the image shader and load this Skylet Garage HDRI. As we are in ACES, change the color space to Utility Linear sRGB. And now we need to rotate the HDR image to match it with the backplate. Just simply enable this Flip U to flip the HDR horizontally. And set Offset U to something like negative 0.04. And now it matches with the photographic backplate. We don't need to see the Arnold sky. We just want to see its contribution to the lighting. So set its camera contribution to zero. And let's increase its sample count to four for a cleaner render. Now we need to add the backplate. So simply add a Cinema 4D background object. Create a new image shader. And rename it to BG for background and also assign it to the background object. And open up the shader. And now we can load the backplate. The next step would be to match the camera with the photo, just move it around until it matches or use tools like Cinema 4D's camera calibrator tag to match the camera perfectly. And now we can assign our shadow match shader to the ground plane. So create a new shadow match shader and assign it to the ground plane. And voila, the car is integrated into the photo. I'm just going to open up the car shader and decrease the RGB value of the base color to around 170. Now we can open up the shadow match shader again and take a look at some of its important options. A shadow color controls the color of the shadows. You can use it to tint the color of the shadows to match a photographic backplate. We can uh, probably steal the shadow color using this color picker from underneath this car or maybe from here. Or now set it to black. Shadow opacity determines how opaque or dark the shadow appears. We also have this alpha mask option which is enabled by default. If we take a look at the alpha channel in the IPR, when this option is enabled, the alpha channel contains the shadow mask and if disabled, the alpha channel won't consider the shadow mask. Keep it enabled for now. In the diffuse section, you can enable this indirect diffuse option. And now the shadow match shader will actually receive indirect diffuse from the scene. Let me disable indirect diffuse for now and take a snapshot. And now enable indirect diffuse and set its intensity to something like 5 so it's visible. And now we can take another snapshot. Now comparing the two you start to see the shadows are becoming brighter. There is some color bleed around the car on the ground. 
Um, let's actually open up the car shader and copy the base color to save it for later and change the color to a bright red. And in the shadow mat, increase the diffuse intensity maybe to something like 10. Now let's take a snap. The effect is more obvious now. The shadows are taking on that red color tad. The red color of the car bleeds into the ground. Cool. Now we can keep indirect diffuse on and set its intensity to one maybe. Next, we have the specular section. Let's enable indirect specular here. To see it more easily, let's increase the IR to around 20 and roughness to zero. And now the car, the, the car's reflection is visible on the ground. Uh, when the road is slippery and wet, it's nice to have some indirect specular reflections. Okay, I'm gonna change the IR back to 1.5 and disable indirect specular for now. Under the background section, the background type is set to scene background, which in this mode, the background texture, in this case, the backplate photo will be projected through the active camera onto the ground plane that has the shadow matte shader. But if set to background color, you can use a specific color or texture or project our own texture. Let me show you how we can get the same result of the scene background mode uh, manually. I'm gonna open up the shader network. Let's drag and drop our background shader into this network as a reference. Now add a camera projection shader, which allows you to project a texture through a specific camera. Connect the background image as the projection color input of the camera projection shader. And drag the scenes camera as the camera to project through. Now set the camera projection shader as the background color input of the shadow matte shader. And that's it, same result. For now, let's disconnect the camera projection tag and change the background mode to scene background. And now back to the shadow matte shader. First, let me change the car shader's color back to its color that we copied. The shadow matte shader has some specific AOVs, uh, shadow, shadow difference, and shadow mask. In the render settings and under AOVs tab, come down to the shadow matte AOVs and add them to the active list. Now we can take a look at them in the IPR. Uh, shadow is a direct light shadow AOV. Shadow difference is a difference AOV which can be used to eliminate the shadows from the direct component and shadow mask can be used in composition in post basically to localize and tweak the shadows like uh, changing the color of the shadow or making it less visible to match uh, with the footage. Uh, one last thing to cover is what's called off-screen color. Let me unhide this sphere which has a reflective shader. You see these black reflections on the sphere? Uh, that's an off-screen area and it happens because the sphere reflects uh, some parts that are outside of the background plate. And to solve that, we can add an Arnold parameter tag to the background. And now we can change this black color to any color or use a texture, maybe just a background texture. And now it looks much better. So that's about the shadow matte shader in Arnold for Cinema 4D. See you in the next video. Make sure to visit our website mographplus.com or our Gumroad page at gumroad.com slash mographplus and check out our premium CGI and rendering courses for Cinema 4D, 3ds Max, Maya, Arnold, Corona, Vray, Redshift, Octane and so on. See you in the next video.